So hello everybody, my name is Anna Sureda. I am a clinical hematologist working at the Catalan Institute of Oncology in Barcelona, Spain, and I am also the president of the EBM team. So um, allogeneic stem cell transplant for many years has been the standard of care uh, to treat patients with relapsed refractory diffuse large B cell lymphoma that fail at least two prior lines of therapy, or for those patients that are autotransplant eligible if they fail an autologous stem cell transplantation. Allotransplant is able to cure uh, these patients. And in fact, the data that we have from retrospective uh, analysis and for, from one prospective clinical trial indicates that progression-free survival and overall survival after, after allo of those patients that are able to reach the procedure, it's around 40 to 45%. Uh, nevertheless, ALO, of course, it's associated with a relevant non-relapse mortality, which is around 25 to 30%, and also with a relapse rate after the procedure. Thanks to the results of three different phase two uh, prospective clinical trials. Uh, the SUMO1 trial is the trial that gave the indication to oxycaptogen as a third line of therapy in patients with relapsed refractory B cell aggressive lymphomas. The Juliet trial is the trial that gave the indication to TSAGEN in a similar uh, population of patients. And finally, the uh, Transcend trial is the trial that gave the indication to lysocaptogen. Uh, so nowadays we have um, data on the long-term follow-up of patients included in this trial with a median follow-up of three, four, or eventually uh, more years. And uh, the follow-up of these trials indicate that CAR T cells are able to cure in this setting around 40 to 45% of the patients. So because of this data, uh, CAR T cells have been competing over the last few years with allogeneic stem cell transplantation. And the reality is that if we look at big registries, for instance, the European registry of the EBMT and also the American registry, the CIBMTR, um, uh, we can see that the numbers of allogeneic stem cell transplantation performed in this precise indication uh, have been decreasing over time, while the numbers of CAR T cells performed our third line treatment strategy in this population of patients have been increasing over time. There have been um, of course, we are never going to have, let's say, a head-to-head -head comparison between ALOs and CAR T cells in this specific setting. Um, we have some uh, retrospective analysis that try to compare a kind of homogeneous population of patients, patients being treated in third line with an allogeneic stem cell transplant are and also in third line with a CAR T cell. And in fact, one of these studies was presented at the last TBMT uh, meeting, and it's uh, a study uh, on behalf of the Go Kart Coalition. Um, and there are other studies that have already been published. So which is the learning from these studies? First of all, that it's quite difficult to compare both population of patients because there are significant differences between those patients that at some point were taken into the allogeneic stem cell transplantation procedure. Usually these patients have to be in complete remission or partial remission, as opposed to those patients that are being treated in a similar situation, but with CAR T. Uh, by definition, uh, usually patients being treated with CAR T have active disease on board, uh, have eventually a worse performance status, have ha high LDH uh, values, which is a prognostic factor, basically indicating that patients with CAR T are not treated uh, with CAR T in complete remission, but with active disease, which is, by the way, a potential advantage of the use of CAR T in front of allo transplant. But let's say trying to uh, do multivariate analysis and to homogenize uh, these populations of patients as much as possible. What we can see is that um, non-relapse mortality is significantly higher in the allogeneic stem cell transplantation uh, population of patients with respect to CAR T, even uh, taking into consideration that CAR T cell treated patients as I have said before, going to the procedure with active disease. Relapse rate 
and this might seem also quite reasonable, is higher in patients being treated with CAR T in relation with allogeneic stem cell transplantation. Um, and this makes that, at least in some of these studies, uh, survival curves, so both progression-free survival and overall survival curves are quite similar between both groups of patients. Um, in some of these studies, PFS and overall survivals are a little bit better in those patients being treated with CAR-T. In spite of the fact that in some of these retrospective analyses, the um, survival curves are quite similar, the fact that non-relapse mortality is significantly higher with um, allogeneic stem cell transplantation in relation to CAR T cells where the non-relapse mortality is usually around 5% or eventually lower than 5% has made um, uh, CAR T cells being uh, the preferred um, a treatment or the preferred choice of therapy for those patients with relapsed refractory large B cell lymphomas that fail at least to prior lines of therapy. We can eventually, let's say, squeeze a little bit more the data and we can eventually try to find out uh, patients uh, that might eventually benefit more from an allogeneic stem cell transplantation than with CAR-T. And this population of patients that, of course, it's difficult to find, probably represents uh, patients with very high-risk disease where the relapse rate after CAR-T is so high that it's not being balanced with a significantly lower non-relapse mortality. Uh, probably in centers or in areas around the world that have accessibility to CAR-T, to autologous CD19 CAR-T, um, CAR-T is a preferred op option over allogeneic stem cell transplantation in this subgroup of patients.